start passing them out. diagnoses that I had with videos. So what I was thinking um, and what I wanted to do is essentially play through these videos one at a time and have you guys in terms of like what you're seeing. I'm going to slow the video down. So as if you were going to go take an iPhone video of someone and this is what you're going to see. I'm not, we're not going to necessarily measure angles, but kind of break down how that would look. Um, and what you would kind of tease out of this specific person. Um, once everybody has a <laughs> I'll watch some videos. <laughs> All right, so I highlighted the neutral. Unfortunately, I didn't have uh, candy videos of all the different ones. But um, So each one of these athletes is currently in a neutral shoe. Um, and then the top kind of, we'll start with the lateral hip pain. So this first athlete has lateral hip pain on the right, maybe right on the right. And so um, COM is center of mass. So we're looking at how's their looking. We want to kind of look through these things. So. What's their foot contact? Can you kind of get a guess of what their mid stance knee flexion is? Does it look good? Does it look like it's uh, too much? Or are they bending too low? Or are they lacking? Or are they like a real stiff knee gait, which you'll see like a post op ACL has like no loading response. So they're just like stiff every step until they get that really off gait because they don't, they're not trusting their post op leg. Um, and then the hip extension we talked about in the talk. Pelvic tilts, that hip drops, so we'll look at that from the back along with knee alignment and the foot position. So we'll start with the lateral view, which will give us our first view. So go ahead and make some notes on what you guys think you're seeing, and then we'll kind of go over. Sorry, there's a little bit of crying. So go through your foot contact, your mid stance knee flexion, what do you think? And then their hip extension. Hip and knee extension, those kind of come into it. Go ahead and hand. It's not a test, it's just a learning experience. Everyone feel to see enough on that one, or do you want to keep watching? Okay, one more time and then we'll switch to the posterior. You guys hear me? Try not to disturb them. Okay. You can come down right to it. All right. So now this one. So remember, right hip pain. I think I'm right. So do you see significant pelvic tilt? Uh, how's that knee alignment look? Varus valgus neutral. And what's the foot position? Foot loading? Are they pronating? Are they supinating? Or they look pretty natural? Neutral. We're good? All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, what do we think about foot contact? 
Things look pretty good, close to the center of mass, ahead of the center of mass. Any thoughts? Good, awesome. Yep, the contact's pretty good. Uh, what about mid stance knee flexion? Any ideas on that one? I know that was a hard one to eyeball. It looked like on the right leg, it was less, um, it was more extended. So she was flexing a stiff on that, on that, um, right yep, on that right leg. Yeah, so a little, a little bit of stiffness. Um, although I do think she falls like just barely within a range, but yes, it did, it does look a little stiff. And every once in a while, you notice she kind of has a a little, she comes down a little harder, like she's kind of compensating a little. So just that. And what about hip extension? Again, less, less extension on the right. Than the left, a little bit tighten up. So again, that one's a little hard. She's, it, I think it's more related to a compensation than like, cause she's guarding that <coughs> painful side more than a, like a true mechanical issue. Um, <clears throat> pelvic tilt. Too much? Too much. Too much on the right. <clears throat> what about knee alignment? That one's pretty, pretty obvious. Valgus, yep. And then foot position, pronation. So, what do you think? Where do we? Where should we start? <laughs> start with the foot. So we're gonna. So now, we. I didn't really talk about this in the presentation, but she is one of these cases where it's. This is fairly rare, but you do see it where one side is pronating significantly and the other side really doesn't look too bad. And so you want to be a little careful not to overcorrect one. So typically when I see a situation like that, I need to make sure that like a shoe is not going to overcorrect the other side, which in this case, I think it would. Inserts are must, much less likely to overcorrect a foot. So, so even if she puts inserts on both sides, it won't overcorrect. Whereas a shoe, a stability shoe, has a stiffness in the heel cup that can create an overcorrection because when their foot tries to pronate that little bit, it like doesn't let them. And so then they get like that tightness in the knee and kind of that IT band pain. So to be conservative, we went with an insert on her right to correct that. Um, and then what do you think she needs most? If you had to tease out, do you think she needs strength? Do you think she needs uh, <clears throat> form changes? What do you think is her biggest area that she needs? Form. Strength and some form? Okay. So for her, I think, like I said, I think I said this in the presentation, she actually has a little bit of a structural valgus as well. But um, definitely, I think it's probably a combination. So we need to establish some base strength because her right leg is clearly much weaker than her left, right? So there's a lot of imbalances happening. Um, and then once that kind of starts, once she starts to get that strength, then we start to progress to more movement and more form type stuff. Um, so I wanted to throw in a couple of my favorites. So I think she needs a lot of glute strength and a lot of like glute knee control. Um, I don't have a band, but one of my favorite exercises we do with our runner strength camp is if you take like a band, tie it to something. So say I tie it to here, I'm gonna hold it. So it's a pile-off press, you guys are familiar with pile-off press. Um, a single leg pile-off press, so your outer leg is the leg you're working. And you just have them hold here and just push in it. Now, put a mirror in front of them and they can see their knee going in. And all of a sudden they are like, oh, I know how to turn my glute on. Like all of a sudden their glute need kind of figures out how to turn on in that standing position. Because um, they, they start to see that when that feeling of rotation happens and everything kind of comes together in their head. So that's one of my favorite kind of, for those people that have that extreme valgus and that knee motion, it's getting them stable on one leg, but it's also really teaching them how to engage that glute need and prevent that valgus motion. Um, uh, she probably needs, I mean, she needs a lot more than that, but I just kind of wanted to tease out some of my favorite exercises for some of these things to kind of give you guys an idea. All right. You guys ready to move on to the next case study? All right. Let's move forward. So next one we got to do. Any questions on that one? Yeah. It's on? Good, good call, Kate. No? No one. I try to make the first one. <laughs> this one's trickier. 
Oops, sorry. Okay. Start with the lateral. Alright. Start with the lateral. So remember we're looking at foot contact, that mid stance knee flexion, and the hip extension. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, this person had a lot of interesting stuff. Actually, yeah. good on that one. Have some ideas, or keep watching. Second round or no? Play again. We're good. Does he have some pain? Huh? What's his complaint? Uh, knee pain. Oh. Yes. Honestly, this one's a little harder to see on slow motion without a bunch of angles. But we can draw some lines. All right, let's actually draw some lines on this one because it's a little bit. All right, so what do we think about book content? Good, close to center of mass. Good, yeah. He's got good, really good foot contact. Uh, perfect midfoot strike. Excellent. How is that? But what you can kind of see is that his center of mass stays a little bit low. So even though his foot contact is like perfect midfoot strike, it's still a tiny bit like further ahead because his hip, like center of mass, are kind of low coming in. He never really gets like. He's, well, you'll see it never gets hip extension, which is why he's kind of staying low. Um, putting a lot more through that quad, which <clears throat> we'll see in a second. So what do you guys think about mid-stance knee flexion? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? you think it's too much? Oh, good. I wasn't sure if you guys were going to be able to eyeball that one. Uh, so, yeah, he has a lot. Again, he's starting kind of low, so his excursion is not huge, but... His, that flexion is real low in that 120, really, really, definitely below that 130 range. But I mean, and like I said, he's staying kind of low. So in terms of that difference between initial contact and mid stance, he's slightly outside range, but not as big as you would expect. Like if he was coming in here, it would be huge. Um, so, so. How, you, how did, go ahead. If he's squatting when he's running, how do you correct that in a runner? So. So, so let me go to the next part and I'll kind of show you. So it is difficult if they kind of come in, but you got to kind of tease out why they're so low. And if we move forward, so yeah, too much knee bend, but foot contact looks pretty good. But we get to here, and he, he never really gets that knee extension. Uh, so he gets okay hip extension, but he doesn't get that last little piece of knee extension. And then he. So he doesn't get very much height at all. He kind of just like stays low. So this is where my favorite thing comes in, the wall drill. Um, so definitely, you know, checking on hip flexibility, all that stuff um, to see. And then, I don't know if everyone can see it. And actually, if you guys want to come up and use it. Um, so we're going to do those. Um, a wall drill like this, so you start getting them working on that, practicing that extension and that push off and that good move activation and moving through that range of motion as a neuromuscular control. And that's usually where we start then. And then we progress to quicker movements, so switching from one side to the other, 
up on the wall and every time really thinking about that knee extension and most of them you have to cue them a bunch of times for the, when they start out but they eventually start to get that good position where they can turn on their glutes and push off and they start to engage that so they get a stronger gait the other thing with this athlete is very quad dominant so um in terms of strength we want to start turning on the glutes and the hamstrings and just getting more length in the back of the body and let's go to the so you think uh, the speed of the treadmill will only have something to do with it it seemed like to me i might say uh i'm gonna pick up the speed with a fair bit and then i'll put the entire power sometimes so yeah there is where the speed would purge and him at the same yeah so i'm running in so the video is at a quarter speed um so yes sometimes that can be but there we also have to think about the type of athlete. So this athlete's trying to do an Ironman, so I can't tell him to run fast all the time because that's not feasible either in terms of what he's training for. So we have to kind of find that biomechanically efficient speed. Um, and typically, yes, if they're like super, super slow, that can sometimes be why they're not getting knee extension. But honestly, they should be able to get it regardless of what speed. Once they And if, if you run them faster, they do the same thing. So... As he comes in here, versus so you're talking about. Sorry, I can't hear you. Great in terms of. Yeah, trying to get that. So again, if they don't get that drive, this becomes, so this should be passive, and so that knee drive shouldn't be that hard. But if they don't, if they never get extension, this is already pretty hard work. And so getting it even further is even more difficult. So again, that's why we kind of go to the wall drill to start, and that practices that too, that knee drive part. The wall drill, that's part of the position, is that not only are you getting, so if this is my standing leg, you're getting this strong position here where the core is engaged, the glutes are turned on, but you're really thinking about this position. So you're getting that strong push off position and you're cueing it. Yeah, you can do it. <laughs> yeah, so you start to do more dynamic where you start to switch it quicker. And you're thinking about at that top position. A lot of times you got to cue them on this too, that flexed foot at the top. So this is a strong position too. It's not, okay, I'm up here. And then I'm really, my back leg's really strong, but this one's just kind of hanging here. You gotta, gotta get that to a strong position too. So they start to engage all that. So honestly, that's more of a neuromuscular control drill than strength. Yes, it, they should turn on their glutes and they should start to feel that. And so a lot of times it does help with that as well. So we, um, Ryan, who's our former strength and conditioning coach, but he would um, do this as like an activation before running. And honestly, I've done it with athletes where we did it, and then I tried to change their form, and it like changed like that. Because all of a sudden, they became heightenly aware of that piece, their push off and their, and their drive and everything. So if they, uh, if they strengthen their glutes and hands to balance the strength of the quad, then they should run they should have a complete flexion extension, uh, a complete movement where they will be more upright. They'll be yes. tall or they won't be down low. Exactly. exactly. So what you see is, again, that difference of a good, strong mid-stance position. So this is a weak mid-stance position. Knee over the front of the toe. My glutes are sort of working. Not great, though. Um, versus here. Sorry, I'm struggling today. Um, just getting that strong position. Like, I can feel everything turning on. And so it's teaching that. And that's why we, I really like the controlled single leg squat in, like, a runner's position. And you can start to weight them up once they – but if you start them out on this, most of them can't do this very well. Even I can. I'm not running a lot lately, so. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, that, again, that single leg stability. So one of the tricky things about him – this position. So what do we see at the foot? It's a pretty good pronation, right? Both. Yes. What about the knee position now? What? Neutral? Yeah, it's pretty bare actually. A little bit of knock knee. 
Yeah, so he's not that long in structure. And he does have a history of IT band issues as well. So you look at that center and the knee is way to the outside of that line. Um, and so this is one of those situations where I chose to not correct the foot because I think it will just create a slew of excess tightness further up the leg. And another thing we talk about, I talk about with every athlete is, are you symptomatic? So the foot is not symptomatic whatsoever. And if you're running marathons with no foot issues, but he has a history of IT band tightness. And with that extreme bowed leg structure, which we can't change, right? We can't rebuild them. I would rather err to the side of caution on the foot and let and let's see, like if we, we communicate about what the symptoms would be if that became an issue and all that. But the foot strike is good. He's asymptomatic in the foot, and he has created more pain. He's bow legged, yeah. I don't see that. So the leg bows outward. If he was not moving, you'd see that more varus position. So the knee would be coming inward. Whereas his, it kind of arcs, it's almost like his egg, leg arcs out. You don't see that? You would fall wrong, you would soft tissue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I always suggest, you know, and he had been doing all that. So maintaining foam rolling after, uh, maintaining that flexibility. So stretching, foam rolling, all that stuff. With it, honestly, any athlete that has any sort of bow, structural bow, I, I'm always, we're always suggesting that to kind of maintain it. Because I tell them, you're going to always be at risk of that pain. So if you got part of your homework is to keep you as flexible as possible. So we're good. <coughs> All right. So let's <laughs> contact, mid stance knee flexion, hip extension. Yeah, when you take the videos, are they immediately when you get on the treadmill, you let them run for a little bit? Um, I let them get there? to like a warm up, but I used to wear them, like try to wear them out more and run them like multiple speeds. Um, but found that there was no difference. It was always the same. We saw the same things. They're a little bit more exaggerated. Um, but most of the time, everything's going to show up pretty quickly, at least for me. I, I, I don't know if it's because I've just been doing it so long, I see it, but. Um, <laughs> But it, did, it didn't make a huge difference anymore. Oh, now I'm out of time. All right. All right, guys. We're so close to the